Hello everyone, thank you uh, Chairman for introducing me to you. Uh, the title, uh, as you mentioned, is uh, one kind of MEMS uh, resonance sensor for real-time uh, shear stress monitoring. So, uh, first of all, uh, what is the shear stress? In fact, shear stress arises from the force vector component parallel to cross section. <laughs> Uh, shear stress arises from the force vector component parallel to the cross section. So this animation shows that uh, this animation shows that the force is parallel uh, to the cross section, and between these two layers uh, will be shear stress. And uh, this is uh, one of example from the nature, uh, the uh, parallel component of the gravity. At the surface, uh, make shear stress between this uh, ground surface layer. So, in fact, in electronic de device fabrication, when one layer is come deposit or grass on top of the another layer, if there is mismatching between these two layer, so there will be shear stress at the surface. And shear stress uh, formula will be uh, uh, will be described by this formula. Not just for uh, layer deposition or growth, in fact, every element that makes a uh, force that is parallel to the surface uh, will be included as a shear stress sensor. So this is shear stress sensor that is being used for flow sensing. So uh, the potential application of shear stress will be uh, for detection pressure, for biomedical application, hot spot sensing, or force sensing. So, two most uh, conventional technique uh, widely have been used to detect shear stress. Uh, shear stress. So, one of them should be a laser setup with a cantilever. Due to the surface stress, cantilever will be bent. And this bending, in fact, uh, will change the reflected beam. From this point, we can detect the shear stress. The other technique in MEMS, uh, in MEMS uh, fields, uh, it being used a lot, is a piezo resistive. So, when the cantilever, for example, is bent, the piezo resistive resistivity will be changed. So, this uh, kind of uh, these sensors are very accurate, but the price is very high compared to this. But most, of the, but, but both of these uh, techniques have their own problem. For example, for optical setup, uh, the problem will be the bulky optical setup, and this kind of sensor it takes a lot of time to alignment are not suitable for any area of cantilever, and their performance is limited in. Uh, uh, opaque uh, liquids such as blood. The most uh, big issue for piezo resistive is uh, because of the noise, especially thermal noise. So how we can overcome these problems? Uh, let me you introduce our fabricated devices. So this is console simulation of the devices. So this is the image of the uh, device fabrication. Top side is a resonator and the back side is a cavity. So, between, uh, in fact, there is a very thin membrane layer, couple of microns, that is separate cavity from the resonator. Right? So, we can deposit, uh, uh, we can deposit or cross air material in the cavity without disturbing the resonator. So due to the uh, stress, on, uh, due to the stress, so membrane will be bent or will be deflect. So this deflection uh, will be transferred from this beam to the resonator, and it will change the frequency shift of the resonator. In fact, our resonator is a thermally actuated piezo-resistive resonator, and the natural frequency of the resonator described by this formula. So, uh, the K is the stiffness of the beam, and N is the mass of plates. So, if we apply both AC and DC to the electropath, 
and uh, if AC uh, frequency adjusted to the resonance frequency of uh, natural resonance frequency of the uh, this system, so it will start to resonate, right? So how we can uh, uh, how we can detect the uh, shear stress? In fact, as I told you, with changing stiffness, we can uh, uh, we can uh, change the frequency shift. So how it's ha happening? By applying force. That's why uh, we use transfer beam here. So the membrane is deflected up or down. So this uh, transfer beam will induce force and it will change the stiffness of the beam. Okay, so we fabricated an uh, array of different uh, membrane sizes for the same amount of stress on the back side bigger membrane uh, deflection is higher than others so it means that for bigger membrane the sensitivity is uh, will be high so this animation is a magnitude section of this uh, this part and shows that how def uh, how membrane deflection uh, transfers to the resonant beam this is a resonant beam and this is uh, stress analysis of the beam by council. So it shows that how bending in fact change the stress and uh, in turn change the stiffness of the beam, resonant beam. So we understood the concept of this resonator. So let's go to the fabrication. So the fabrication uh, starts from double SOI vapor. This is the oxide, this is the silicon and this is the silicon again and this is the uh, handle layer so the top side is pattern and it's by DRI then the back side is pattern, pattern by uh, photolithography again and it's by DRI finally device released by hydrofluoric acid so these uh, are two ima SEM images this uh, uh, this uh, kind of devices is suitable for big cavity design so these uh, wings here are uh, flexible and prevent device to easily broken due to the back, uh, back uh, stress so for small uh, cavity design this is, uh, this is unseen cavity I show with a flashlight uh, is suitable for smaller uh, cavity design and this is back, uh, this is SEM of the cavity. This is a SEM image of the cavity. Okay, so we fabricated our device. How we can uh, characterize, our, uh, uh, how we can test the, the device. So the best way should be uh, a, a metal layer deposition because there is a difference between uh, different characters between metal layer and silicon membrane. So this uh, will be induced stress on the back side. Right. So this test, uh, in fact, was done inside temperature controller chamber. So after uh, recording data, we deposited 400 nanometer nickel, and then again we did the same test, and this is the results. So th this curve is for before deposition, and this is related to after deposition. So before the position, there is also frequency shift, right? This is because of the temperature. In fact, temperature has effect on the uh, uh, on the stiffness of the beam. So for this reason, is uh, frequency shift. After the position, there is an offset shift in every point in every temperature, right? This is uh, because of the intrinsic. Uh, stress between nickel layer and uh, silicon membrane. Beside that, as you can see, the slab is also changed, right? From 35 Hz per degree changed to 60. This is because of the difference uh, thermal expansion coefficient between nickel layer and silicon membrane. So it means that every material has a bigger thermal expansion coefficient uh, will have bigger, smaller. So that's why we deposit aluminium layer for 100 
pick same nickel and because aluminum has a bigger thermal expansion coefficient so the frequency shift for aluminum is bigger nickel the most uh, motivated and impressive section of our experimental work was monitoring the air time frequency shift after device fabrication we released the resonator but we didn't add back oxide this is the oxide effect right so we did set up test and we drop hydrofluoric acid on the back side. So this hydrofluoric attack the silicon dioxide and gradually in the time it acids back silicon dioxide. So after a while, then the silicon dioxide gradually acids the frequency shift. And finally when silicon dioxide completely acids the frequency shift is now. We got six point about uh, 6.5 kilohertz from this experiment for uh, 2 micron silicon dioxide a thickness uh, for a membrane about 2 millimeter. Okay, so we uh, did uh, experimental. Now uh, let's go for the theoretical calculation of shear stress. So how we can calculate the shear stress? Uh, this is the formula. Uh, the name is Stony formula, it's some kind of simple formula used for shear stress and for calculation shear stress we need maximum deflection in the membrane and uh, we have to know the diameter of the uh, membrane so we use profilometer tools in clean room and uh, this is one of the uh, example output of the problem. You can see 46 micron deflection, maximum deflection, uh, has been achieved for a membrane diameter about 6 millimeters. And this is one of uh, SEM images of devices under stress. You can see the uh, membrane is being bent. So with using profilometer, uh, we can calculate the stress. Right? So uh, we did calculation and this is uh, this is output of the calculation besides that also to make sure that uh, to make sure that we, we did simulation by the console and the output result the same approximately same so we did a lot of uh, measurement with different uh, membrane thickness and membrane diameter so as much as membrane diameter getting bigger and membrane thickness uh, decreases, the sensitivity, sensitivity increases. But thinner membrane uh, breaks easily as it is more fragile. So we, we have to have optimum design. We got the best answer for a, a, a membrane with a thickness of 10 micron and diameter is about 2 millimeters. So in the conclusion, uh, we use a frequency readout uh, resonator to eliminate uh, noise. Uh, the fabrication was very uh, was uh, easy fabrication process, and because uh, cavity is separated from the resonator, so uh, we can uh, we can test every material that makes stress on the backside. So finally, others acknowledge uh, the. UFFC and IEP committee for travel support and NSF, uh, Texas SRC and Texas Instrument uh, and uh, these people for their helps and support and thank you much for your attention thank you.